Wow, I'm so thankful for our church family, aren't you? When I was just looking at that video and I thought of all the nationalities, all the cultures, they're all worshiped together here. It's just so reflected in everything that, that is a part of us. And so what a, it, that's such an honor. It's such an honor to worship the Lord together with you. And uh, I want you to just to look at somebody and just say, I'm thankful for you. Maybe you're pointing at him across the room, all right? But uh, I think it's my favorite time of uh, the year when we can just give thanks. My family told me to stop telling Thanksgiving jokes. I told them I just couldn't quit cold turkey. I like that. You know, um, and I'd like to keep going. This isn't a Thanksgiving, but I thought it was funny. I called the doctor and said, my wife is going into labor. What should I do? Is this her first child, he asked. No, this is her husband. (laughs) Here's another uh, dad joke. I started investing in stocks, beef, chicken, and vegetables. One day I hope to be a bullionaire. <laughs> that is funny every day of the year. I mean, that is priceless. So just hang on to that one, all right? <laughs> well, we are thankful. And uh, I am thankful that uh, we get to meet together to serve and enter into his presence. And today we are going to, we are going to continue to do that. So I pray in the next few moments as we open up this word today that it will speak to us and change our lives. So Father, that's what we pray. Lord, we, we thank you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We trust in you. We need you. You really are the air that our spirit breathes. So may our spirit just come alive and grow as you speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. I want to bring your attention today to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. This scripture, and can you turn the lights up in the auditorium? If you would do that, that'd be great. I want you to, if you have your Bibles, you can open up to this. If you have a device with your Bible on it, I want you to open up to this scripture. It, this is a scripture that I have, uh, for a long time, I've just internalized it, which is a, a way of saying memorized it. But it's, there's so many scriptures that as you're meditating on this word, as you keep going over it in your heart, it just becomes inside you. Isn't that right? I, I, to me, at least, memorization is something I do with my mind. Internalization is something I do with my heart, my spirit. Did, did, did that make sense? So when I, in, when I see internalize it, I'm just saying, don't just do this with memory. Let it go into your spirit. And it's a scripture that I believe... Um, really directs us as we enter into prayer. It just gives us perspective. And that's the word we're going to use a little bit later on. It gives us an understanding of what happens when we pray. Now to set this up, before we go to the verse, um, you need to understand what happens before the verse we're going to read. The writer of Hebrews, which many believe was Paul, Paul the Apostle, the writer of Hebrews is talking about bringing our attention to the moment when Moses went up a mountain to meet into the presence of God. And if you look at Exodus 19, you will see this is the place by the, in Exodus 20, we get the, the Ten Commandments. But in 
it, but going up there as he's meeting with the presence of God, there was thunder and lightning and flashing and all the people stood at a distance around that mountain. The whole nation of Israel had just come out of, of hundreds of years of, of slavery and now they're on their way to the promised land. They came across the Red Sea and uh, they saw the miracles of, of God and now they're standing at the foot of this mountain and the Bible says that it be, this the presence of God was so powerful that the mountain and everything was shaking around them and thunder and lightning and people, they looked up and here's Moses in that mountain, but the people began to, I mean, they were filled with fear at the presence of the mountain. But then Paul, as he's writing that, he comes to this scripture and we're going to start reading in verse 22, if you'll follow along. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. You have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. One translation says this, this way. You've come to thousands and thousands of angels in joyous celebration. Now, I want to pause right there. I want to just talk, to, just share just this. Whenever we're praying, the writer says, in this moment, it's not like what it was when Moses himself went up to the mountain and you stood at the foot of the mountain. And the, everything was, was just so filled with power. But he says, now there's a change. Now you, you have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands and thousands of angels in joyous celebration. So when you get down to a place of prayer and you bow your head and you just come before him, you're not just talking to nothing and you're not just in this room just looking at the ceiling. You are actually coming into that awesome presence that Moses actually entered into. Isn't that great? And, and not only that, when you are coming in, you are coming into a, a, this gathering of innumerable angels. When you're praying, when it describes thousands and thousands of angels, it's really talking about myriads. It's talking about millions. It, it, in other words, uh, the language here indicates there are so many angels you couldn't count them. And when you're praying, you're coming into that presence. And, and even though it's different on earth, in heaven, the angels must know something we don't know. Because right now, around the throne of God, there are millions and millions of angels, joyous, joyful celebration. I mean, they're dancing and singing and everything that goes along with that kind of praise and worship. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Let's go on, verse 23. You're coming to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You've come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time, in other words, the time that Moses, in, in, in verse 19, or, uh, Exodus 19, he says, at that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. That is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Now, knowing that, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe 
for our God is a consuming fire. Let's just give the Lord thanks for that word right now. I, I believe God's just speaking to us through his word today. Amen. I, uh, I think I'm going to just skip down instead of doing that verse by verse. I just want to go down to um, at verse 26, if you can find that slide. It says, at that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This scripture tells us that everything is going to come into a time that when, when it will be shaken. Everything that is visible will be shaken. Everything that is temporary will be shaken. 2000, in 2001, 9-11, that one event shook the earth. Ever since then, travel has been changed. Today, it's become a part of our life. But in that moment, on 9-11, everything, it seemed, was shaken. A few years ago, when the announcement was made about COVID and everything was being shut down, at that time, everything was shaken. I remember that because there were, I would still come into this building every day and everything was shut down, but I would, at, it, during the time that would be normal rush hour, I'd be driving on the freeway all by myself. And during that time, just, I would walk through this building and just kept praying for everybody. And, and there, there was so much fear in the land, so much fear that people felt that if they stepped even outside the doors of their house, they would catch a deadly plague. That's the kind of fear that was shaking the land. During the time that was shaking, during that time, it seemed like everything was turned upside down. When I remember one day, I... During that time, I just felt like I needed to keep encouraging all the people that were in my sphere of influence. And I would do these, these brief videos in key locations. But I remember one time, right during noon hour, go, standing downtown St. Paul, and the streets were empty. And I was standing in the middle of the street doing a video about how God wanted to bring healing and hope for people. Everything was shaken. Then October 7th, just a few weeks ago, once again, everything was shaken. It started out as a normal day. It started out with, a, with everything was completely normal, but everything was shaken when terrorism hit, destroyed and murdered and massacred people. And even to this day, everything is being shaken in the world because of the sense of terrorism and also the sense that here's Israel being surrounded now by enemies. And everything is being shaken. The Bible tells us in this scripture that there was going to be a time when once more everything will be shaken. And today we see that. We see where economy is being shaken. We see where morality has changed and, and, and everything is being shaken concerning the structure of family and, and wholesome relationships. Things are being shaken in people's minds in the sense that, that even concerning what, that there's two genders, which is something that was a simple scientific fact. Now science is saying it's changing. And we're going, wow, is everything being shaken? Entertainment is being shaken. Politics, government is being shaken. How do we live during a time when everything is being shaken? Let me put it to you personally. It's very likely that your life is being shaken. You might be going through a, a, break, a broken relationship. You might be going through a doctor's report that is so negative. You might be going through an economic struggle right now and you don't know where you're going to 
even receive tomorrow's food. I don't know what your world is like, but it could be that you are going through a time that everything is being shaken. Well, here's what God's word says about that. That everything will, that is temporary, everything that's temporary in our life, everything that's visible will be shaken. What we're looking for, what people are looking for, is something that's stability. It, you know, I, just to play on words, in just a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating Christmas. And I just was thinking about it, that that time, in that time, everything was being shaken by a Roman government. In that time, people were also in fear and struggling. And here's the thing, I thought of this, it just entered my heart just a few days ago. The only thing that was stable in that time was the stable where Jesus was born. The only thing that was stable was the presence of Jesus coming into the world. And starting next month, we're going to look at this theme of with him, with us. So how do we respond when everything is being shaken? Well, verse 28 says this, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. Look at that. Let us be thankful. I believe the number one thing that helps us in unstable times, in times when everything is being shaken, there's something about a thankful heart that gives us perspective. First of all, he says, let's be thankful. When we give praise, we are giving voice to our spirit. When we are thankful, we are opening up. We're opening up our perspective to see what God sees. And that's why it says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. When everything is being shaken, in everything, give thanks. Rejoice always. Never stop rejoicing. Never stop joining with the angels around the throne. Never stop rejoicing with the angels around the throne. Don't let the shaking that's happening with temporary things in your life be your focus. When we give thanks, it opens up our perspective to see what God sees. And we begin to realize that we have come to a mountain that cannot be shaken. We have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And it is eternal. Do you realize, friends, every single government that isn't the kingdom of God will be shaken. And every single government is temporary. But the one that is unshakable is the kingdom of God. And when we see the kingdom, no matter what's happening around us, we are going to rejoice with the angelic hosts that are surrounding the throne. There will be a joyous celebration. I know everything's been shaken, but isn't that great? God is unshakable. Hallelujah. I love the story in 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. Whether you know it or not, we've been singing about it. Elijah, he's with his servant. And uh, God's giving the prophet of God, he's giving him over and over this, this picture of what the terrorists are doing in advance. And by the way, I believe that we need to have prophetic voices today. Isn't that right? I believe that we need to have a prophetic voice today. You see, um, Elisha, when he, was, when he would pray, God would speak to him and show him how the terrorists were going to come against Israel. And, and all the way back in 2 Kings 6 chapter, 
in all throughout scripture, you can, you'll read over and over where terrorism was focused against Israel. We shared a couple weeks ago, why Israel? But here is Elisha. He, he gets this picture of where the terrorists are going to come. He goes to the king and he tells him the plans of the enemy. This happens over and over until the the, the head of the Syrian army, he begins to figure out what's happening. He's told that there's Elisha the prophet. So they feel, they believe that if we can stop this prophet from giving away our secrets, then we're going to destroy Israel. So they find out where Elisha and his servant are staying in this community, this little village. And in the night, they take their whole army and they surround the village. In the morning, his servant, Elisha's servant, wakes up. He goes outside, I think a normal day. He goes outside, and as he is standing outside, probably he's just stretching and yawning, and all of a sudden he looks and he sees all around him is terrorists. They're surrounding him. And I can see him at that moment just kind of... You know, and he goes and he jumps and grabs a hold of Elisha and shakes him up. He says, oh, ask master, we're surrounded. The terrorists have surrounded us. And uh, I love the story. Elisha just tell, tells him, hey, there are more with us than with them. Now, I, I can imagine that, that servant, he, he does the math real quick. <laughs> one, two, one, two. One plus one equals two. Two. Then he... One, two, three, four, five, one, one, one. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem real. Kind of like the way we feel sometimes. It seems like we're surrounded and all we can see is the enemy. So Elisha simply says, God, open up his eyes. Open up his eyes. And when he opens up his eyes, he doesn't see the enemy anymore. He sees that they're surrounded. Remember those angels enjoy celebration? This is how we fight our battles with joyous celebration. He sees them surrounded. He doesn't see the enemy anymore. He just sees that they're surrounded by the hosts of the armies of heaven. I want you to know, friend, when you pray, when you call upon God and you have a thankful heart and in the middle of whatever you're going through, God, I pray right now that God would open up your eyes to see that God is with you, that there are more with you than with the opposition and our God is mighty and powerful. Come on, let's give a shout of praise right now. That's why I believe, that's why I'm always encouraging you Maybe to some of you, it has been a source of irritation. That's because your spirit, your your soul inside you is so not used to praising out loud that you get irritated when a spiritual leader says, here's a simple thing of obedience. If you begin to live a lifestyle of thanks, if you begin to live a lifestyle of praise, what will happen is you will have, you will have victory. You overcome Because you will see what heaven sees. You will see what heaven sees. So I pray that your eyes would be open continually. And that's why I'm saying, when you come into the presence of the Lord, we do it with a thankful heart. I'm going to go on here, but, you know, the second thing it says, so it says this, see to it, worship Jesus with reverence and awe. I want to go back to that verse, verse 28. Since... Therefore, since, because of all of this, since we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God with reverence and awe. The second thing is, we must worship Jesus with reverence and awe. Worship Jesus with reverence 
and awe. I believe that that worship means it becomes, he becomes so highly valued. His presence becomes so highly, highly valued that you are in awe of his presence. You know, I've been amazed lately. Uh, I know for those of you who are not familiar with football, but I've been so amazed lately how um, just one uh, one young woman who attends a football game draws the attention of the world. Her name is, I don't know, like Taylor something. I don't know. But, but what I'm, what's amazing to me is how we know how to give reverence and awe to popular people in the world. We know, how to, we know how to respond when, when uh, it's just something that triggers with inside of us. Wow, Taylor Swift is in the, is in the audience. And, and what they say that it, the NFL, the viewing of it has gone really uh, high, especially with young women, young girls. But I'm just saying to you, we hold people in reverence of awe, but sometimes the way we approach God is like, well, okay, he's here, fine. It is true. As it, we, we say this quite often. God is here right now. He's in the house. But the reality is when we experience what we did earlier, it's not that he's in our house. We are in his house. Amen. And when we do that, we hold him. You see, when you, to be thankful, I believe we need to worship God continually, not just when we come together, but we hold him in reverence and awe. Just think of how even these gatherings would change. Every time we gather together, that we would just think it intentionally direct our focus on the fact that, you know what, we are coming, we have an invitation to come into the presence of God. For those of you who are reading one year Bible, I already read tomorrow's, and, it, and uh, tomorrow's in, in Ezekiel, the 40th chapter, it describes the building the temple, and it's, it's actually giving you an architectural picture of what the temple looks like. But then it describes this group of priests called the Zadok priesthood. They're priests that are the descendants of this godly man who was, his name was Zadok, who, who just was so filled with commitment and faithfulness and encouragement for King David and God honored Zadok by blessing his, his sons and daughters. But he said, but in this holy of holies, the only ones who can enter in and draw near to me will be the descendants of this one man, Zadok. And I thought about it, and I thought, my goodness, just think about every time you st that we come together, every gathering that we come together, now, because of Jesus, we have the invitation to come right into that holy of holies as, a, as priests, as, as sons and daughters of God himself, adopted into the family of God. And you and I have this awesome privilege that we can draw near. And even today, and in in any time that we come in to worship, come in with expectancy. You, you, whether you knew it or not, you actually entered through the veil to come into the Holy of Holies that in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel 40, it says the only ones that come in are those who are the the sons and daughters of Zadok. And they could come in simply because of the humility, the faithfulness, the steadfastness of that man. We come in because of the humility, the faithfulness, and the steadfast love of Jesus. We come in because of the blood of the Lamb. 
So we can come into this unshakable kingdom, this presence of God, and worship him with reverence and awe. The fear of the Lord needs to return to the church of Jesus. Valuing his presence. I'm not sure what kind of car you drive. You could be driving a, you know, a 1990 Prius. I don't even know if they made Prius back then. And it might be just a beautiful old piece of car. But you know what? When you're worshiping him in that car, Wow, it becomes the Holy of Holies. It becomes the Holy of Holies. Go to the third. The third thing is this. Do not, so knowing all of that, do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? Don't refuse this moment. You can neglect him or you can reject him. You can neglect him, you can reject him. But I want you to know something. Just don't refuse his grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness, and his love. Because no matter how much you've neglected him, no matter how much you've rejected him up to this moment, He's looking at you with a heart filled with passion. You know, it says, our God is a consuming fire. Don't don't refuse him because our God is a consuming fire. What does that mean? It sounds like judgment, but it's it's but it's even more than judgment. It's passion. We're in the day right now where that consuming fire says, man, I'm so consumed with passion for you. In the second service, this next service, we're going to dedicate a baby. But I love to see that couple as they're just so consumed with love for this baby. They're so consumed with passion. It's the way the Father is with you. He's a consuming fire. He's passionate about who you are. So why neglect him and why treat him with a lack of reverence, a lack of awe? Why treat even this gathering with that? Why, why complain when you could be thankful? Why? He says, I'm going to open up your eyes and you're going to see that no matter what is shaken, no matter what is shaken around you, you've got a kingdom of God that will be unshakable and it's eternal. Hallelujah. God loves you so much that he gave his son, Jesus. If you would receive him, don't reject him anymore. Don't neglect him anymore. Don't neglect the place of coming into his presence. Worship him, whether it's in your car, whether it's at your home. Just live this sense of awe of his presence. When you're watching television or when you're, when you're going to entertainment, be aware of his presence. It'll change your lifestyle. Know that he sees you and he loves you. And most of all, be thankful. Oh, because no matter what enemy is surrounding you, he's going to surround you with his presence. He's going to set you upon a rock. He's going to lift up you into a safe place, into his dwelling place. And your head will be lifted up above your enemies that surround you. Oh, that's why my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us online today. If you have any prayer requests, please email prayer at redeeminglovechurch.com and let us know how we can be praying for you. If you dedicated your life to the Lord today, we want to let you know that all of heaven is rejoicing with you. Please email 
info at redeeminglovechurch.com and let us know. We'd love to follow up with you. We hope that you can join us live every Sunday at either 9 or 10.30 a.m. or on Wednesdays for prayer at 6.30 p.m. If you want to learn more about Redeeming Love Church and how to get connected, you can go to redeeminglovechurch.com. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you know more about our upcoming videos and live streams. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And until then, God bless you.